Hi students, once again welcome to this video tutorial. It's in continuation to a series of videos regarding propagation. The video will focus on propagation through layering and its different aspects, soil layering, air layering, advantages and disadvantages. So first of all, we'll have to understand what we mean by the layering. So layering is basically a method of propagation in <coughs> is a technique of plant propagation is basically an asexual propagation method of asexual propagation here we are making a new plant from an existing parent plant our existing stock, stock plant and you select a branch, a sitem, usually a one year old branch at the current year shoot and you kept it attached to the parent plant but you are uh, putting this branch down and the adventitious roots are formed on it. The advantage here is that the new plant which will be formed remains attached with the plant. As a result, it derives this nutrition from the parent plant till it is fully developed. So the sitem which is rooted while it is attached with the parent plant is called as the layer. And when you have a successful layer, a layer is detached, separated from the parent plant and is transplanted in the field. So it is a a successful way of propagating a plant because the stem remains attached to the parent plant till it forms the root, it derives its nutrition, its food, everything, hormones from the parent plant. It is helpful in raising creepers and trees and it's also helpful and induced artificially in many plants that are difficult to root from cuttings. We have already seen that several plants propagate easily with the through cuttings, through their cuttings, but some are hard to root and for those layering is beneficial. So better rooting can be achieved by use of exogenous rooting hormones like IBA, indole butyric acid, indole acetic acid, naphthalene acetic acid and also with certain methods which we have already seen like ringing, girdling, wounding or etiolation. Etiolation we have already seen that it is you are leaving the plant in darkness or cutting in the darkness and that process has been seen to promote adventitious rooting. So layering can be successfully done in magnolia, rhododendron, lilac and some herbaceous plants. So layering is basically a method of propagation. You are propagating a plant from a sitem or the branches of the plant and while it, the branch is still attached with the parent plant. What are the advantages of the layering? As I said, layering is effective method of propagation. Among those species that are hard to root through cuttings. Why it is effective in hard to root cuttings? Because light exclusion in the rooting zone, that is etiolation, promotes rooting and layering. You see the rooting zone is kept away from the light and that promotes the uh, rooting uh, refer to the etiolation which we have already done. Layering is dependent on environment is, is less dependent on environmental conditions in comparison and like water relative humidity and temperature because layering proves successful as physical attachment of a system with parent plant allows regular supply of water, nutrients, carbohydrates, hormones to the rooting area. That is why 
layering is less dependent on environmental conditions because by all means it remains attached with the parent plant and it is getting the regular supply of water relative humidity and temperature as is uh, taken by the parent plant layering ensures successful rooting as accumulation of photosynthesis and hormones is maintained in a rooting area so there is always a good supply of photosynthesis and hormones to the area which is uh, bended or which is uh, is is put for layering layering produces large sized plants in a short duration layering is easy and require little infrastructure layering is also natural method of reproduction in many plants like blackberries and raspberries so it is also a natural method of reproduction in several plants these are the advantages what are the disadvantages a limited number of plants can be produced from a parent plant see in comparison with the propagation through cuttings where you can produce number of the plants here the choice remains limited new plants established have short and brittle roots layering is more labor intensive as compared to the uh, propagation through cutting and layering proves expensive in areas with less labor availability high mortality rates have been observed in earlier plants these are some of the disadvantages but obviously it has an advantage especially in the hard to root uh, plants through cuttings so these were the disadvantages of the layering what are the types of layering see depending upon the type of the plant uh, nursery men have adopted number of layering systems and six types of layering methods broadly classified into first is soil layering which is done in soil or ground and the second is the air layering which is done in the aerial parts of the shoot aerial parts of the plant in soil layering we will cover simple or tongue layering tip layering serpentine layer or compound layering mound or stole layering trench or continuous layering and then we will discuss air layering let us discuss them one by one first of all what is simple layering simple layering is also called as the tongue layering it involves bending an intact shoot to the ground from a parent plant you are taking the lower shoots especially and you are bending them uh, with the, with within the soil and it is done in plants which have usually low growing branches mostly shrubs are preferred for this type of layering layering is done in the autumn or early spring and you take a flexible dormant one year old sitem branch and you bend down into the soil and the portion which is to be bended down is first defoliated and an injury is made on the bent side of the sitem which can be one half or the 3/4 inch cut and then which will be away from the tip that is 15 to 20 cm away from the tip so in simple layering you are taking what you are taking a one year old shoot and you are bending it down first defoliating the area the the area which is to be bended in the ground and then you are making a small injury and uh, which will be 15 to 20 cm down the tip that is away from the tip so you have a simple layering this way you are taking a, a shrub or a plant is here in the lower branches are pegged down here and the, the 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 tip is away from this area or you can take the two branches uh, which will be uh, bent down into the soil this is a simple way of layering let's elaborate it first of all we have said that there are the wound types types of wounds can be because these are the things which promote the adventitious root formations adventitious root formations can be promoted by ringing or that's called as the girdling in girdling what is done there is a removal of a shallow ring of a bark around the bend we will see them one by one tonguing is given an oblique upward cut at a node and notching giving a v shaped cut on the lower side wound can be made at a bent side 
what wound is doing wound leads to accumulation of hormones where you are making a wound there will be since the hormones are polar they are going from upper south to the upper to the lower pole, pole and they they start accumulating in the cut area or in the wound area and it promotes adventitious root formation so we have the types here simple talk can be made you are making a cut this way oblique cut and then making this type of this is called the tongue type of a wound or you can make a v notch first make this one cut and then this way and then you are removing this especially in the area which is to be bandied down in the soil so this is the v notching type also you can use a ringing type so you are making first cut here first you are defoliating the area and then you are making the first cut and the second cut and then you are crossing it this way removing the bark removal of the bark is done here and you are making a ring this ring is called as this is called as the girdling also so we have a ringing type we have a tonguing type we have a v notch type of the wounds these wounds are being uh, done simply to promote the adventitious root formation so injured portion can be treated also with hormones root promoting hormones which are auxins they stimulate adventitious roots and a branch is bent down in a u shape held firmly under shallow depression dug in a soil injured part is kept in contact with soil pegged in the soil by landscape pin you have the pins available or you have a wire peg available with which you are you are fastening the the branch with the soil sometimes to promote more rooting you are keeping the the wound open by inserting a toothpick into that area so that more adventitious roots are formed there. so the base of layering is then covered with soil once you have made a wound and then you have packed the branch in the soil you are covering with the soil usually you are keeping the loose soil you can maintain the soil you can put the sawdust over the soil or the organic manure over the soil and that promotes the adventitious root formation and makes the soil loose remaining tip 6 to 12 inches is left exposed above the soil roots usually develop from wounded area of branch and soil around the cut area is kept moist because they need uh, moisture for their root development and the mo it's always kept moist and successful layer when you feel that there is the rooting for root has taken place there it is detached from the stock plant or from the parent plant with a sharp knife and is separated and 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 layer is dug up and transplanted elsewhere so that means the lower branches are used for the formation of the plant suppose this is the lower branch you are taking the lower branch here you are making a depression in the soil by removing the soil here and then you are putting a peg so that it remains firmly attached with the, in contact with the soil before that you are also making any type of a injury either it can be girdling it can be v notch or other types of the simple injury to the the end of the band which is in contact with the soil and then you are putting a moisture over it and then you are waiting for the rooting to develop there so this way you are developing a, a successful layer this was one type of this a second type is called as the tip layering as the name signifies you are using a tip for layering branch tip so it is the simplest form of layering and it occur naturally in some plants blackberry and raspberry some plants prefer to root at tip instead of mid stem so ends of the twigs ends of the twigs are buried 3 to 4 inches deep in the soil and buried twigs are covered with soil and sawdust the tip growing downward and bend sharply to grow upward so buried shoot develops roots within a month and it is it is recurved it's recurved tip since you are burying a tip and the recurved tip forms a new plant layer is detached and from the parent plant and it can be transplanted into soil during spring 
and as i said this is a natural method of uh, reproduction in gooseberry and some creepers also but number of the plants are uh, multiplied through tip layering so in layering what you are doing suppose this is the plant it has the number of the shoots which are bending down you are, the, the, the it has it is tips the tips when come in contact with the soil they develop the roots and it is its curved tip will form the the shoot so you can do it in a plant taking the tip down here it will form the root and it is tip will come up that will form the the future layer and with the roots will be developed at the tip so this is called as the tip layering in black raspberries it can be done in a pot or it can be done directly with the soil so you are doing it this way also you are pegging the with with with, with these iron pegs you have to keep this attached with the soil so you are keeping the tip here you are taking a tip and then you are keeping attached attached with the soil with this peg, peg or the landscaping pin and then you are covering it with the sawdust and in in a month or a one and a half month this will develop the root and there will be the tip the curved tip will come up and there will be a successful formation of a layer so this is also done naturally also done uh, induced in number of the plants it's called as the tip layering another type of the layering is called as the serpentine or it is called as the compound layering basically it's a modification of a simple layering as a serpentine suggests you are taking a long branch and are making different types of the layers so it is suitable for plants which have a long flexible stems so stem branches alternately covered with soil and exposed along its entire length so it's a modification of a simple layering you are you are taking a branch and you are putting it down and you are keeping at least one bud exposed and the others are kept underground and one year old branches pegged at several places the stem is bent into the ground every few inches stem is ringed and buried between each node or a bud so that means one bud is left in open part of the stem rest is covered so it is done alternatively bud is open bud in open develops into a new branch and multiple points are rooted along the same stem so at each bud what will happen there that will form the vertical shoot and there will be a rooting also so after the emergence of roots the branch is cut into pieces several plants are formed from a single branch at a time so it resembles a serpent that's why it is called as a serpentine uh, layering or it is also called as the compound layering because number of the points are subjected to a layer example is done in clematis grapes and wisteria also as i have done this is this is how we are taking a long branch and you are pegging keeping this open keeping one bud open and then this forms the rooting and then this is also called as a serpentine so we have done in case of clematis here so as i have done in the clematis you see this is the lower branch of the clematis and we are making a wound and then you are making wound at several points keeping one bud open and then you are pegging it with a peg a plastic peg and then you see there this branch is pegged at several points here it is pegged here it's pegged here and then onwards also and then you are covering it with the sawdust with the soil this will be the point where the rooting will be formed and this will act as a the, the shoot is already there the bud is already there that will develop the uh, so we are taking a long branch down this is called the serpentine layering as is done uh, in clematis so then one more type fourth type is called the mound layering or it is also called the stole layering here what we do shoots are cut from 15 to 20 cm above the ground you are taking a basically it is done for the root stocks you are taking a plant and you are cutting the shoots of it 15 to 20 cm above the ground level 
especially during dormant season and you are burying it under the ground and soil uh, is mounded over it during spring so uh, what we what what will happen when you are taking a dormant plant or cutting it as aerial shoots 15 to 20 centimeters above the ground level and you are covering with the soil what will happen new shoots will be developed there and these new shoots or the branches will appear within two months and new shoots can be subjected to ringing or girdling also and upper part of the ring is treated with iba made from linoleum paste shoots are left exposed for two days for absorption of hormone so what you are doing here you are taking a, a plant and you are cutting the aerial shoots and then new shoots will be formed in the next season you can subject them to ringing also so that it promotes the rooting there you can apply the rooting medi medium to these exposed shoots and then these treated shoots are covered with moist soil uh, you are making a mound over it moisture level of mound of soil is maintained at all times roots develop in shoots twigs within 30 to 40 days and e sitem will develop roots by late summer so you have a number of rooted twigs now they should be separated from the parent plant after 60 to 70 days following autumn remove the mounded soil rooted stems are cut from the parent plant and transplanted individually in nursery so this is the most important commercial form of layering in in crops especially the fruit crops apple pear quinus other fruits rosemary lavender cotoneaster and spirea these are the plants which are being made see we will we'll explain it this way this is the plant this is the spring or the first year of the plant you are cutting the aerial part of it in mound layering in stoling you will be very deep that will be a difference here so fall in first year what will happen there will be number of branches and then spring of the second year you are again cutting it so there will be uh, soil and branches will be formed from this area these branches you are when the branches are arising you are covering it with the sawdust or you can subject these branches to ringing or girdling also this is the summer of the second year and late fall second year there will be no leaves and this will be dormant again you are cutting the shoots here now what will happen these within the mound have developed the roots so late fall second year the roots are formed here and you are cutting them and then you are planting them in spring of the third year and these are the harvested layers so that means you are taking a plant and you are cutting uh, in, in 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 a sequential manner you are you are cutting it as aerial shoots and covering it with the sawdust and then when they are dormant uh, you will see during their formation of the shoots uh, either application of the hormones is done you will find that rooting is taking place there and after removing the mound you will cut these number of the plants will be the number of success these will be the plants are the successful layers and they will be harvested and then planted so this is how it is done in case of cherry plants this is the first plant which was taken and then you are cutting it and then you are covering it with the sawdust or the with the mound and you will see number of the branches are formed there and these branches will form within the soil mound they will form the number of the roots there as is done in case of the apple also so this is the the way they, which, which we have seen in the earlier slide same is done here and but it is covered with the with the mound here and then the, the roots will be formed as the roots are formed here when you remove the sawdust you'll find these will act as a, uh, this is the new plant or which is the successful layer so this is called as the mound layering in apple mound layering in cherry plants and number of the plants are subjected to mound layering so this is how it is done here you have a one plant you are covering removing the bark and once it is formed and then there will be number of branches it is covered with the mound and then there will be the formation of the the shoots 
and then in the following uh, dormant season you are uh, removing the mound and you are cutting it and that will be the successful layer that is called as the mound or the stole layering there may be a difference between the mound or a stole in stole you are not going the a deep cut in mound you are making the deep cuts so one more is called as the trench layering trench layering is a common method of propagation as the name signifies trench you are making a trench and you are burying a, a branch of a plant or sometimes a full plant within a trench keeping the buds or the shoots open which will form the vertical branches so it's a common method of propagation for woody fruit plants so what you take plants that produce large branches so plants that fail to propagate by other methods so it's applicable to them selected branch or a plant as i said is placed horizontally in a shallow trench and long and flexible stem are pegged towards the ground young vertical shoots arising from these plants are gradually mounted so when you are you are burying, burying a plant or a branch in a soil in a in a, under in a depression or a trench and you are covering it there will be a formation of a vertical branch slowly you are adding the mound till the branch is growing up and up and then you are arising and they are vertically uh, vertical shoots arising from these are gradually mounted and then a mound of a sawdust 15 to 20 centimeters high is raised in autumn and winter what you will see there will be a formation of the roots and rooted layer are separated from the parent plant when you remove the mound you will find that there is a rooting vertical shoot is already there there is a root and they are then planted in the nursery so this way you can you can you can make a root stocks of apple like m16 m25 walnut pear and cherry are successfully done with trench layering especially the root stocks are being propagated through trench layering because it gives a good root stock vertical branches forms the shoot and the, the stem downwards has a perfect and then it's used for the grafting uh, which will be the root stocks of the apple and through successful grafting then you are making a grafted plant of an apple or cherry or a pear so this is called as a trench layering as you the name signifies the trench you are putting the branch in a trench or a hole in a trench so you are making a simple trench here this is the plant and then you are taking one of the branches down into it and covering it with this and making a, a peg with a peg you are attaching it with the soil and this hole is then covered with the soil this is a trench layering in the bottle brush or you can see a whole plant is taken here one year old plant or two year old plant is placed horizontally in the soil and then covered slowly and gradually with the sawdust you will see there will be a formation of the vertical branches and then after a, after a, after a time stupidity time when you remove this you will find this is here and from this there are developed the vertical branches and these are also having the root so you are cutting it here and it becomes a successful root stock and this is what is trench layering about then the last one is called as the air layering as you know so far we have discussed the soil layering in soil layering you have discussed the we have seen only when the the plant is put in a branch the plant branch is put in a soil underground and covered with the soil covered with the uh, sawdust but here in air layering you are taking a aerial branch you are taking a shoot so is ancient method of this is an ancient method it was introduced from china it allows root formation on aerial shoots of one year old branch preferably you take a branch which is of one year old or current year shoot and a bark of selected branches removed near the base as you have done in the simple layering here in the aerial shoots you are also doing the girdling or the ringing because they promote the root formations and top of the wound is treated with auxins or iba paste and wound is completely covered with a rooting medium you have the choice of the rooting medium a ball of moist sphagnum moss as you know the sphagnum moss has a 100% moisture retention capacity is the best rooting medium it's growing on the rocks or you have a, a grafting clay also which can be uh, completely covered around the wounded area 
or when of when you are making a ball of a sphagnum or a, a, this uh, grafting clay around the bounded area you you cover it with a polythene film is wrapped around the rooting medium and this is only to hold the rooting medium and also to prevent the moisture loss through evaporation you are covering it with the polythene and sometimes you are placing over the polythene a silver foil that is to prevent uh, the effect of avoid the effect of light direct light on the uh, medium uh, on the on the on the on the the wound area because as you have seen the etiolation is promoting the rooting the effect of light will be the reverse of it so roots normally appear after one to three months in the aerial shoots and when you see that roots are formed there rooted system is then cut below the level of roots and rooted layer separated from the parent plant and rooted layer is planted in the shaded nursery air layering is useful in plants which do not produce adventitious roots easily and which have the which have larger diameter branches which cannot bend so we are taking their aerial uh, shoots and then or uh, making a ringing or the girdling on the aerial shoots and then covering with the sphagnum moss it becomes a ball like structure it's also called as the goatee culture it is done in case of magnolia pomegranate china rose lychee guava and croton so here is how it is being done so if in case of magnolia you are taking a, the the current year shoot and just below the aerial part you are taking a portion you are removing the uh, leaves defoliating the area and then you are making a, a cut here making a girdling or with a sharp knife a sterilized knife you are making this uh, girdling or the ringing here and you are applying the paste iba paste which is usually applied on the on the top of the wound area because you know the girdling is successful the rooting will be on the top of this because the 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 the, the carbohydrates photosynthesis hormones will be coming from this and there will be an accumulation of them on the on this side that is the upper side of the cut and then you are applying the iba paste over it and you are taking a sphagnum moss which is kept moist and then you are covering the the wound area that area is uh, with the ball of a sphagnum moss with your hands and then you are covering it with the polythene sheet to prevent the to hold the sphagnum moss and to prevent the moisture loss and then you are uh, covering it with the help of an your tape or or any other tying material or and then this is how it appears on the aerial shoot and it can be tied with a tape and sometimes you are also taking a silver foil you are covering the, the 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 polythene which is a transparent polythene with a silver foil to avoid the exposure of the light especially the rooting area that is the the, the rooting area where we, which can have an negative effect due to the presence of the light so this is how air layering is done in case of magnolia you can make multiple plants from a single plant and successful layer is then uh, cut here is cut here it is rooted and then planted in a shaded nursery so this is how we have seen in this uh, video uh, how you can propagate though is a, a vegetative propagation it is an asexual method of propagation and multiplication and where you have seen how you can multiply your ornamental plants your fruit plants and your uh, shrubs uh, through these very simple methods of propagation hope you have understood uh, this video and we'll be continuing the propagation videos uh, three or four multiple uh, a couple of more videos will be on this and i hope it has it will uh, definitely help you to understand the methods of propagation uh, if you have uh, been uh, if you have become uh, uh, if it has helped you to understand the process uh, you can uh, subscribe for more videos uh, to this uh, channel that's the green treasure and till uh, the next video is uploaded uh, thank you for the patient listening and 